What is up everybody? It's Nick from Mining Office and today I'm going to be giving you guys a quick tour of my farm. I'm going to go over my total hash rate and my returns. Before we get into anything, I just want to ask you guys to please like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, my analytics show that 95% of the people who watch are not subscribed. So I just want some of you guys who like the content, please subscribe. Let's get into it. So to start off, I think we'll go with this rig um, and that'll start us off on my Ethereum mining. So this rig here is a nine GPU rig. I'm using a triple A wave splitter and their Sluice V2 mining frame. Uh, this can support up to 12 GPUs. However, my motherboard right now only supports up to nine um, and I don't have more cards to put in here. Um, so this thing is amazing. Before I had it running on just a single server power supply. However, it was getting a little too loud uh, because it was getting too hot in here. So for the time being, I plugged in a second server power supply. This one's only silver rated, but I just ran three cards off it to get this one off turbojet modes. Aside from that, uh, in this rig, we have eight 1660 supers, all right? And this is the Red Fox 1070 Ti. So its performance in terms of mega hash is similar to a 1660 super, it takes a little more power. Um, however, this is a proper home for the card and I will not be getting rid of this ever. So um, yeah, these cards down here, uh, these are the Tough Gaming by Asus. I have five of these, all right? And the intruder here on the bottom row is the Zotac card. So you can see the Zotac card is pretty small and uh, puny compared to the other cards, but I think it gives me like my most or second most mega hash and runs like the coolest or something ridiculous like that. Anyway, so that's the bottom six GPUs. And on the top here, we have two more. This is the first 1660 Super I ever picked up. Uh, at the time, I paid 400 Canadian dollars for it. That was an absolute steal. I remember specifically because uh, like I said, it was a really good deal. Uh, it's the MSI one. I don't know exactly the model, but again, it performs really well. And this is the Asus Dual 1660 Super. Um, by far my worst performing. Um, it only gets like barely above 31 mega hash, but whatever, You'll, you can't complain for, you know, let's just say 70 watts on these 1660 Supers. So this whole rig altogether gets me about 284 mega hash at approximately 800 watts. So this is a good one circuit rig. I only have 120 volt here. So my circuits are 15 amps. Um, considering I can pull about 1,500 watts safely, uh, this is pretty good. I also have these two other computers on that circuit, but we'll get to that later. Um, I do have more cards mining Ethereum. That brings us to our second rig here. This is the Raven rig, all right? But I have two full hash rate 3070s right here, two gigabyte ones. This is my first ever uh, 30 series card. It's a Gigabyte Vision OC. Um, again, pulls 62 and a half mega hash, takes about 115 watts. It's a super card. And about the same thing here. This is the Gigabyte Gaming Pro, or no, sorry, the Gaming OC, excuse me. Um, and gets about the same performance. So these two cards are also mining Ethereum. Again, about 62 and a half mega hash each. And finally, I've got this Asus Dual 3070 here. It's light hash rate, but it gets about 43 to 44 mega hash. The only light hash rate card I have that I actually make run on a ETH unlock, uh, it gets about 350 efficiency kilohash per watt. That's pretty much my limit for running LHR cards. So everything else runs on Raven. That sums up my total Ethereum mining. Everything else here, oh, look who we got. Everything else here is mining Raven coins. So let's start by looking at the rig and then we'll get to the computers and what I have in there. So the first card I have in here is my EVGA For The Win 3 3070Ti. It's an absolute beauty with the RGB you can see and it's also absolutely massive. Uh, it gets a solid 41 mega hash but draws quite a bit of power. Uh, next up we have the lowest tier card here, uh, the Zotac 3060Ti Twin Edge OC. You can see it's the only dual uh, cooler fan card here and uh, by far my least favorite. I would avoid Zotac cards, just my opinion. Um, these cards we've seen already. Next we have another 3060 Ti. This is the Asus Tough Gaming card. Uh, this one as well is absolutely massive and uh, works very well. 
in terms of cooling that triple fan. And the last card we have here is my RTX 3080. Um, if I didn't mention before, all the cards that are mining Raven on here are LHR. This is the XC3 model, and this guy pumps out a good 48 mega hash at 275 watts. So my highest producer, also my most powerful card. So that's about it for this rig. In case you guys didn't know, the 3070 that's up there is also connected to this rig with another AAA wave uh, PCIe splitter. And uh, let's move on to the computers. So in this computer here, this is my old computer, let's call it. I do my video editing on this and just you know, web surfing and browsing. I have my Zotac 3016 here, uh, mining Ravencoin again. And if we go up to this computer, I swapped out the Gigabyte 3070 full hash rate that was in here for my 3060 Ti. This is my third one. I did a comparison of all my 3060 Ti videos, so link to that. Yeah, I swapped it out so that when I'm gaming, uh, I'm using this card instead of a full hash rate card. And again, uh, not much to say here. Mining Ravencoin. So in total, uh, that rig on Ravencoin gives me about 143, 144 mega hash. That's about 23 and a half mega hash. And that's about 29 and a half, 30 mega hash. So that's about it for the overview. So let's hop on over to the computer and uh, I'll show you what that looks like poolside. Okay, everybody. So I went to ethermine.org. I put in my ethermine address and this is the dashboard. Um, so just to go through this quickly, you see here, I have two workers. We'll get to that. I have an unpaid balance of 0.1 ETH because I'm hard headed and I set my GUI to like 40. Uh, so the fee is like 125, I think right now. So I'm in no rush to get paid. Uh, I leave my fee at 40 GUI and uh, I hold, I hold there. So anyway, <laughs> uh, you can see my estimate earnings daily. Uh, I don't know how much I can trust this, but that's an approximation. I'll, I'll give you guys a cash amount after. Uh, you can see my hash rate here. Current hash rate just dropped. Uh, it was, uh, here, let me turn this update off. Uh, current hash rate was actually the reported one before. I sit around 452 mega hash, so I know this is legit. You can see it always goes up and down, up and down. So uh, yeah, and I had a bit of downtime because of a Windows update yesterday. So that's why it recovered and it's coming up now. But normally it sits right around that 450 mega hash. Uh, so I'm really good with that. And uh, if you go down a bit here, you can see my active workers. So like I was talking about before, we have the uh, rig of 1660 supers plus the red fox card so that gives us a nice 284 mega hash uh, which is quite solid and then we have my three 3060s again two of these are full hash rate and the other one is light hash rate uh, giving a nice 168 mega hash so it seems my current hash rate is a bit lower on both my rigs but yeah that's just normal it goes up it goes down and your average average is out next we're going to be going over ravencoin you can see for Raven, I have three different workers. Let me just zoom in here a bit for you guys. I have three workers. Um, I have an unpaid balance of 160 Raven. Um, that's because I recently changed my payout settings. I was getting payouts way too often. Now I set it to 200 Raven. Uh, so basically I get a payout ba more or less every day. Not quite every day, but more or less. Um, you can see the current hash rate is 185. My average hash rate is low. All the big dips here you see is when I uh, when I turn off the 3060 Ti that's in my gaming PC for doing whatever else. Uh, so that explains that. If you look before here, my average hash rate was 197. So usually varies between 194, 198. So I like to say normally it's 195. And if we go down to the workers, uh, you see there's the PC with the 3060 Ti. That's exactly the one I'm talking about, uh, which goes on and off. Uh, there's the Raven rig, which is the four cards I showed you guys in the rig. And the Zotac 3060 is the, the card in my older PC. On Raven, the hash rate varies quite a bit. So you can see uh, right now the hash rates are relatively low, like they were actually on ETH. So it just happens that when we check them, they're low. But uh, yeah, that's how she goes. You can see here the hash rate was like 200 and now we're dropping down a bit, uh, even though everything's up and running. So yeah, that's it for Ravencoin. This is what it looks like in my Ethermine monitor. Uh, the current price of ETH is about $4,800 Canadian or $3,800 US. I'm making about 
point twenty seven ETH a month. In dirty fiat, that turns out to be about a thousand US dollars a month, or for my money, about a thousand three hundred dollars a month. Uh, remember, my average is a little low to what it should actually be, so these numbers should be a little bit higher. They also vary with uh, the, the blocks you're mining, uh, varies depending on your pool, it'll vary depending on the total network hash rate, and it depends on the price of ETH as well. So that's why I'm giving you the prices down here. So let's go check out this for Ravencoin. And this is my fly pool monitor. You can see the price of Raven is about 13 and a half cents Canadian or about 11 cents US. Uh, I'm mining about 5,500 Raven coin a month. Again, take into consideration my average was a bit low because I had one of my 3060 TIs offline for a bit. So it could be a little bit higher. Uh, again, in dirty fiat, that comes out to about 600 US dollars a month and $750 Canadian, so that's great. And I still actually have one GPU uh, that's still boxed that I need to slap on Ravencoin, so this will even increase. So yeah, guys, uh, I'm gonna go over a couple more things now. So my total income between ETH and Raven, uh, as you guys saw before, if I add both together, is just about or even over 2000 Canadian dollars just from the space I have in this office. So that's really cool. It shows you the potential you can do in such a small space. Now I'm not saying this type of thing is optimal for cooling, but look, you can do it and you can get this passive income. That ends up being $24,000 per year just with this setup. So uh, yeah. Second point is my electricity is a little complicated. Normally I would be able to get those stats super easily for you guys. However, there's a little mix up with the power company since I moved into this place and we've been seeing and being billed for the uh, neighbor's bill and vice versa. So they kind of went crazy when I started all this mining stuff because their bill went through the roof and my bill didn't change. So uh, they're currently working that out. So I can't really give a good estimate on that. Sorry. Now, if we talk about equipment costs between this rig and this rig, um, I have more precise numbers, but I'll sum it up quickly. Um, Ethereum is a bit hard because I started doing this in April and I was buying and selling a lot of parts and you know, most of the times I would make money on what I would do. So I'd buy a card, I'd mine with it for a bit and when the cards would be worth more, uh, I would sell it off. I would you know, make a slight money on the difference. So uh, I would say my investment in Ethereum is between five and $6,000 which is really, really low. I did a quite good job at keeping my initial investment cost low. And I have 1.2 Ethereum accumulated at this point. So considering that, uh, if I do not take into account my electricity costs, I pretty much am at break even on Ethereum. Um, I should take into account my electricity costs, but we've not even been seven months yet. So it's been between six and seven months and I'm we're pretty much at a break even on the Ethereum stuff. And again, I have not sold anything. And just for the record, in that Ethereum calculation, I'm calculating the price of this card because it's running on Ethereum, so I'm calculating that into it. Now, if we move on to Ravencoin, uh, it's a little more simple. Um, I invested about 6,000 Canadian dollars on cards. All the cards you see here, uh, the ones in these computers, it's about $6,000, and as you guys saw in my last video, I have about $1,000 worth of Raven coin that I've mined. I have a bit more than that. There's some I purchased from on Binance, basically, and that I'm still hodling onto, uh, but I mined about $1,000 worth. So uh, it'll be interesting to see the ROI journey on Raven coin. We pretty much reached it on ETH. I couldn't document it that much. But let's see for Ravencoin. I'm going to be really, really interested and curious to see what my break-even point will be, uh, especially because of the halvening coming up. So stay tuned for that, guys. I'm, I'm really hyped. I'm really hyped. So on a sounding off note, I'm going to give you guys my philosophy. Uh, my philosophy with this is I had the money on the side to pay for this equipment slowly but surely. I didn't buy it all in one day. I didn't buy it all in one month. I purchased all this stuff slowly over the summer and I built up to this and I'm able to pay for my electric and this stuff out of pocket. I'm a bit tight now, but I have not sold a single coin of cryptocurrency yet. So I'm hodling for the long term. I'm waiting for ETH proof of stake. I'm waiting for the Raven coin having before I'm even thinking of selling any of my precious crypto. So on that, guys, let me know in the comments what your philosophy is 
on what you guys mine. I'm really curious. Uh, do you guys sell a certain part like Red Fox? He sells a certain percentage every week. Uh, do you guys hodl everything? Do you guys sell everything? Let me know in the comments and I'll see you guys next time.